Just don't let us look stupid. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Have you ever made milkshakes out of snow? That's right, back to school. Been a lot of fun here on Hot Stove talking with all these great coaches. And today we're focusing on Edwin Thompson and Georgetown University. In 2021, went 6 and 25. And then in 2022, look at that turnaround. Biggest turnaround in wins in the NCAA D1 from 6 to 32 plus 26. The average went up a lot more home runs in the OPS. Just a huge jump as mm. you bring in Edwin Thompson right now. Coach, it's amazing to see when a guy comes in there and can turn things around like that. How satisfying was that to have this team that really struggled all of a sudden put up that many wins and have that kind of a turnaround well good morning guys thanks for having me on you know i think anytime you put work in and you're able to see guys uh buy into the process buy into the plan and then actually have the results it's always rewarding as a college coach and anything you do and so it's all exciting to see that uh, result we did last year edwin what's going on man good to see you again likewise great to see you harold hey so tell us a little bit about the story of how you got the job at georgetown a little bit of your Trek to Georgetown and uh, give our viewers a little sense of who you are. Yeah, this is um, year 19 coaching college. I started off at the University of Maine at Farmington and uh, did that for four years. Went to Bates College for a couple of years as the head coach. But then I went to Duke University uh, on to Georgia State in Atlanta. And I was a head coach Eastern Kentucky for five years before I got this job in 2020, right during COVID. Uh, I had my players for all COVID during the offseason, never met them. We had seven days to meet <laughs> with them, to practice, and to train before our first game. So it was kind of a unique journey that first no year. No wonder you won six of, games. <laughs> <that> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Had seven days of practice. I don't know how, how good of a uh, coach I was. We did the best we could that year. But that laid a foundation for our, our, our year last year. So it's been kind of going to my second full season here uh, this, this upcoming spring. I mean, obviously, there, there's, there's four – black coaches that are in the non HBCUs in the country. So being a black coach, I'm sure you get the question all the time. How many black players you got? Everybody calling you, you know, well, tell us a little bit of the plight of the black athlete in baseball and college baseball, how you see it. Yeah, I think it's growing. Uh, we actually have five. We had three hires this off season um, in the summertime um, for black coaches and non HBCUs. And so we really were able to really, um, Establish that that was that was a, the largest increase that we've had that I know of that I can go back in history and I think from a player standpoint there's a lot of good great players out there there's a lot of people coming uh, we have a an unbelievable conference that does a great job in the Big East and we we really strive to to o open our doors to everybody and I think that's what our conference is about but also our university is a, is a great institution we try to mirror our university uh, and have the best players we can no matter where you're from but you know ultimately there's a there's a big push I think in, in diversity in baseball. Uh, on the coaching side and the player side. And that's uh, a tribute to Tony Riggins, Del Matthews at MLB, and a lot of other folks that are around the country doing a lot of great things. And, and it's just a fun to see um, all the growth in the game. Obviously, last year with the, the draft picks and the top four guys or five guys in the top seven picks, that's all a byproduct of what's coming. So I think it's just a, it's a slow process, but it definitely has increased since I started back in 2020, uh, you know, last five, six years. Uh, that's awesome, man. You know, at one point when he was at Eastern, Eastern Kentucky, mm -hmm. he had 17 black players on his roster. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a tribute to you. Hey, I want to bring it back to Georgetown baseball current day now as well. So if I'm a youngster, clearly education is the first thing you think about, about Georgetown University. So, I, I got to obviously have the grades to get into Georgetown, but how do you recruit and what are you building there for a program? Yeah, I think the simplest, you know, we're a world-class institution, top 25 school in the world. Um, so number one, we look for the students that can academically through it, but we try to find baseball players that are really good students that love to compete, that want to be in, a, in one of the best cities in the world, most powerful cities in the world in Washington, D.C. Um, and so we try to find the right people, number one. That's what, who we find first and foremost, the people that fit our university, fit our mission to our, our athletic department, who's run by Lee Reed. And, uh, you know, so that's, those are things that we try to strive, no matter what it looks like, where they're from, Long as they can play, long as they want to thrive and challenge themselves and push themselves academically and athletically, we're a great fit because our conference in the Big East is really challenging. Obviously, last year, UConn was one win away from going to Omaha. So it kind of tells you how good and depth of our league is. And, and obviously, uh, our university, is, is, we try to mirror that. Also, non-conference, I want to play the big boys. Are you playing them too? How's that, how's that competing wise? Yeah, it's good. We play Virginia. We play Maryland uh, this year. We play East Carolina, Penn State. Um, you know, we're going to challenge our guys, University of Cincinnati. So each year we're going to push ourselves to, to play a good non-commerce to get ourselves ready for the Big East. Um, we always want to – I've always challenged our teams that we've played, uh, whether Eastern Kentucky, LSU, or Vanderbilt, or Mississippi State. 
you know, schools like that. So I think we want to push ourselves and push limits because that's what Georgetown is. You know, it's one of those schools you can do both and at a high level. So we want to, uh, on top of our great conference, we want to make sure that we're really uh, in a position to have success uh, prior to that. And coach, I'm just impressed we were able to do on the field when it came to the power. You went from six home runs in 2021 to 98. Yeah. That's a school record. You ranked 17th in D1 for home runs per game. Talk to me about launch angle. <laughs> well, we talk about competing in our program. That's what we talk about. I think the biggest thing you want to have is hitters that buy into our plan. Our hitting coach, Julius McDougall, uh, has been with me for the last five years, and Brock Keener, our assistant hitting coach, uh, they've been phenomenal. Our players have bought into our system. Uh, we keep it very simple. We, we analyze and use the analytical side of things, but all at the end of the day, we come down to competition, that person, that the one-on-one -on -one battle that we have. And so we really strive for that. And um, launch angle and things like that are, are good for some for, for us we keep it very simple and get a good pitch be on time hit the ball hard with confidence yeah, through our sorry, training. Uh, man. <laughs> you know. sorry about that launch angle <laughs> talking about competing get in there in those battles let's compete yeah. hey yeah, so when, tell us about your roster uh who are you excited about do we have some kids that are going to be draft eligible coming up uh talk to us about your roster a little bit yeah, we returned the, the reigning uh, rookie of the year, the Big East, um, Owen Carapalati, a freshman. Uh, he's a sophomore now. Last year he was a freshman All-American. Uh, was a really good left-handed batter from Detroit. Uh, we have Jake Hyde, who was an all-conference player, all-region player, um, a right fielder. We got a, a couple young guys that came in this year that I think have a really good chance to be successful. Um, we returned um, most of our lineup. So we returned like 10 out of our top 12 hitters. So on paper, offensively, hopefully we can get over that 100th century mark for home runs. But you know, we just want to play good baseball. We have good pitching staff um, and, and a really good leadership in that area. So we're we're kind of a, a veteran team. You know, obviously we transferred. We have a couple of transfers that came in from Stanford, Michigan State. Um, so we have a mix of guys that are returners, but then also some guys that are really talented that are that are currently in our program. Coach, we can't let you go without John Morosi asking a question. JP, take it away. Thanks, Adnan, and thanks, Coach, for your time today. I, I, I love as part of your bio that you coach the Division Three level. D3 baseball is near to my heart. My brother, Michael, played Division Three baseball. What what stories do you can you share with us about the experience of coaching at Bates College? You're up there in Maine, there's snow on the field probably into April. Uh, what did that experience teach you, and how does that shape you as a coach to this day? Well, I think at the I actually started off coaching high school, middle school, you know, so uh, my journey has kind of been unique. But the coaching at the Division Three level, you have to learn how to do everything. Um, I was fortunate to be under Dick Meter, a legendary coach at the University of Santa Farmington, who mentored me. Um, he was able to give me the guidance and allow me to grow, to make mistakes. Uh, you have to do the vans, you have to do the field, do the laundry. Um, so there wasn't anything that was above us as a coach. We did it all. We all all hands on deck. But the kids really, really thrived and, and wanted to challenge themselves. That's why they played Division Three because they enjoyed the balance of athletics and academics. Um, so those six years were so invaluable to my to my career and uh, my development as a coach and as a person, how I shaped my, my, to, to my teachings today. So it, it was really um, the best years in some ways and uh, because it was my first years. And But at the same time, I valued, like I thought I was at the biggest school. Like I thought I was at Georgetown. And that was really the biggest thing for me was just that growth that I had. That's outstanding. You know, it's important. Hey, so two more things. We're going to let you go, Coach. So the spring trip, we're sitting here in December, get Christmas break coming up. Your spring trip, where are you guys headed this year for spring ball? Uh, well, we play East Carolina. So we're in a, in a tournament with Long Beach State, Indiana, and East Carolina, our, our, our weekend, um, kind of our spring break trip, if you will. So we, we're fortunate where we live. We can kind of get out in January and play. And so we try to play as much regional games as we can. Um, but, yeah, we're going to head down to East Carolina and, and play down that in a great environment against a, a super regional team and a top 25 team uh, as well as long as Long Beach State and Indiana. So it's a great chance for us early on to kind of test ourselves to kind of see where we're at. All right, last thing, Coach. going to ask you about Georgetown Jack. What's going on there? <laughs> oh, man. Um, you know, Jack the Bulldog, I think uh, – He's probably more popular than anybody on campus. I think anytime he's around, <laughs> people are grabbing. He has a, he has his own crew that follows him around. Like they came out to the park that day, and uh, they have a personal person to kind of keep him water, get him snacks. I mean, it's like this is he's got a good life, so he's doing okay. We can use a mascot right. around here. Edwin Thompson, thank you, man. Appreciate it, Edwin. Thanks for taking the Thanks, time. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate you guys.